today on 15 on 15. The Prime Minister Mike Amon brings Aruba's vision of sustainability at the Aruba Day Conference in The Hague. Plus, find out why coffee is keeping you up all night. And Aruban senior citizens are sectioned under new management. Welcome to another edition of 15 on 15 here on Channel 15 ATV. Let's start off the show with the latest local news topics. During a recent conference in The Hague with the Prime Minister Mike Amon presented his vision for Aruba Sustainability Plan for 2020. Over 60 businessmen interested in investing on the island were present. The main focus of the TNO Aruba Day conference was to bring key points forward. First of all, to present the idea for Aruba to become completely sustainable by 2020 and to offer opportunities to capitalize on this development. They hope to attract eco-friendly technologies to the island in order to reach that goal. The second goal is to share knowledge of sustainability with neighboring countries. Aruba would like to start a smart community where companies and countries can share their ideas and innovation for greener futures. Large corporations such as Philips, Unilever and Gas Uni have already expressed their interest in joining. Lastly, through this conference, the Prime Minister would like to stimulate and inspire young Aruban students to think of sustainable alternatives for the island's future. With more companies and students interested, the percentage for success is much higher. In other news, the official lineup for the Aruba International Film Festival has been announced, and you can once again expect big names in the industry. With stars like Kim Cattrall, 50 Cent and Juanes making appearances on the red carpet in the past Aruba Film Festivals, this year is no different. The festival, which will be held from the 7th to the 11th of October, has announced their feature films and their documentary competition categories. The event will host international and regional premieres of short and feature-length films from around the world. There will also be special tributes, panel discussions, and master classes. During the opening night, the festival will premiere The Driftless Area with famous stars such as Zoe Deschanel, Anton Yelchin, and John Hawks, which will be directed by Zachary Slesser. During the closing night of the three-day event, the Costa Rican film Viaje will be debuted. A jury of industry professionals such as Virginia Madsen will be awarding prizes to the competition films in the categories of International Features, Caribbean Spotlight Series, Aruban Flavor, and International Shots. In other news, Omega Green is a company in the Netherlands that grows algae and converts it into durable energy, and they are very interested in coming and testing it out on the island. Converting CO2 into a product of value, that is the main goal of the Dutch company Omega Green. They are in charge of algae cultivation on a bigger scale. An executive of this company recognizes that algae is a prime sustainable source that grows on CO2. Omega Green conducted a few experimental trials to verify if this biological system works. What they are looking for is a system that is a simple and cost-effective. It is more than obvious that Aruba is interested in a project like this one, since the Prime Minister Mike Amon believes if the refinery is to reopen, it has to function in a much greener environment. Consequently, the CO2 that the refinery produces when burning that fossil fuel could be used as the prime source for the algae to create more products. The temperature of Aruba might also be beneficial for the organism to grow. This can be tested on Aruban soil, but the government has to consider the high cost of this type of technology. In other news, St. Nicholas has remained the key focus of the government to develop it into the art and cultural and heritage capital of the island. The Minister of Tourism remains firm in his actions to pursue this project. Aruba has been heavily promoting tourist visit to St. Nicholas over the past couple of years, with different events such as the Caribbean Festival to attract guests. Now more than ever, the government is pushing for the development of the region. The Aruba Tourism Authority has done their part by investing in promotional material, their weekly Caribbean Festival and setting up an informational booth. The demand to visit St. Nicholas is already present. What is still missing are more attractions and reasons to visit. The Minister of Tourism, Odmar Odubir, hopes to make St. Nicholas the full package with culinary, historical and cultural attractions. On another note, following up on the development of Aru Parking, they have now introduced price reductions to make it more comfortable for town visitors that are in 
and need a lengthy shopping trip or just running a quick errand. Auto Parking is now introducing new rates. For chauffeurs that are running a quick errand, there are now possibilities to pay for 15 or 30 minutes. The machines will now accept one florin for 30 minutes or 50 cents for 15 minutes. For shoppers that would like to take their time, the same two florins that was originally charged for an hour of parking will now last them 90 minutes. Also, the original monthly rate for employees of the downtown region have been reduced by 20%. The rate will now be 60 florins, and this deduction was made possible since auto parking was able to mark off more spots than previously anticipated. Stay with us because after the break, we'll have a lot to tell you about the latest lifestyle topics. But first, here's a word from one of our sponsors. After the break, this Harry Potter-like invention will get you to look twice. Welcome back from the break, let's move on to the latest innovations in technology. Let's be honest, we have all dreamed of having the power of invisibility at one point or another. Well, we may be closer to the Harry Potter-like inventions than you think. Researchers have created a thin material that may be a massive leap forward in the field of invisibility. When light hits an object, it is reflected in different directions. This is how we see the object's shape. But an invisibility cloak interrupts this process by rerouting lights by creating an illusion of invisibility. Previous versions of the cloak have been large and bulky, but this latest device is thin enough to be worn as clothing. At the moment, sadly, this invention only works on something microscopic, but according to the scientists, there are possibilities of larger versions in the future. Previous inventions tried to redirect their light around the object, but for this new device, however, the scientists decided to scatter the incoming light using a very thin cloth. On another note, let's talk about the young inventor that made waves on the social media in the past week. This 14-year-old boy, Ahmed Mohamed, was arrested this week for bringing a clock to school because his teachers feared that it was a bomb. The 14-year-old youngster said he was just trying to impress his teachers when police showed up. He had been arrested in Texas after bringing a homemade clock to school, which was mistaken for a bomb. Ahmed was known for his inventions, and following the arrest, there was an outrage on social media due to his Muslim background. Ahmed is now the recipient of an outpouring of support online. With hashtags such as, We Support You Ahmed going viral, and messages from tech geniuses around the globe. Leaders such as Mark Zuckerberg, Hillary Clinton, and even the President of the United States sent Ahmed words of encouragement. The young teen is now the front of several funding campaigns, the recipient of 12 scholarships, and job offers at top companies such as NASA and Facebook. He even has been invited to the White House to show his invention to President Obama himself. Turning the page, a new study shows why coffee keeps you up all night. And for those who say they can fall asleep after having a cup are just plain fooling themselves. Find out why. The Harvard School of Medicine found that caffeine disrupts the internal clock that tells the body when to sleep and when to wake up. The amount of caffeine in an espresso, for example, will shift the clock by 40 minutes on average. And if you combine that with three hours of bright lights before bedtime, the effect changes the body by about an hour and a half. The reason being that this shifts the release of sleep hormone called melatonin in people. So although having a coffee at night will shock your inner clock, scientists are finding a way to use this information to their benefit. Stay with us because we'll be right back with more 15 on 50. When we come back, find out about the new management for senior citizens of Aruba. Welcome back from the break. The government of Aruba recently introduced some changes in the department that was managing the Aruban Senior Citizens Department. Recently, the Department of Social Affairs trespassed the management of Aruban Seniors to the Department of Public Health and where a new department was installed to take care of the management of Aruban Senior Citizens. The goal of this platform is to work with this age group to reach a common goal. For this first time, the government and private entities joined a platform like this one to work together in the interest of Aruban senior citizens. The government is interested in a better quality of health care for the senior community, especially in their well-being, how they are taken care of, where they are staying, their overall health, fitness, and of course, entertainment for the older generation. 
The intention of this platform is to meet on a regular basis under one management to reach a much higher quality of health care and to make sure there is no difference if someone is staying at a senior home of Seba or a private one. Thank you so much for watching. These were your local news updates and trending lifestyle topics. Be sure to tune back in on Monday night at 7.15 p.m. here on Channel 15 ATV. See you then. For now, just enjoy your weekend and relax.